I've come to Liverpool, home to the statues of these men, the chap in this photo, and Jackie. Hello. Hello, and welcome to Liverpool. How exciting. She's a local tour guide, and she's going to whisk me around her city on this big yellow bus. Splendid. Liverpool's a great location as it was one of the first cities in the UK to be 5G enabled. So welcome on board. I'm going to take you on a magical mystery tour around my hometown of Liverpool. I'm going to test three budget 5G phones, all coming in at around £250. And the first phone to get a ticket to ride today is the Moto G 5G Plus from Motorola. The cheapest on test, but packed with a 48 megapixel camera and a 6.7 inch display. Next up from OnePlus, it's the Nord N10 5G. It has a smaller 6.49 inch screen, but boasts a 64 megapixel main camera. And last, but by no means least, it's the Oppo Reno 4Z 5G. It has a 48 megapixel camera, just like the Motorola. A good 5G phone needs to have more than just improved data speeds. It should offer good performance in other departments too. So, let's start with those cameras. Jackie, I'm looking for somewhere to test the zoom out on my phone's cameras. How about Bella and Bertie, our famous liver birds? Yes! None of the cameras on test today has an optical zoom option, so I'm depending on the software. The Motorola has wide, ultra-wide, macro and depth sensing cameras, and I'm using the 8 times digital zoom function. Hmm, it's clearly not as sharp as the full frame, but uh, not too bad. The OnePlus, on the other hand, has a 10 times digital zoom. Combined with its higher pixel count, this should give a better image. I actually think a crop on the 64 megapixel wide is slightly sharper than the 10 times digital zoom. And last up, it's the Oppo, which also has a 10 times digital zoom and utilizes a technology called pixel binning, which they claim can give better dynamic range and clarity. Maybe there's a bit of digital sharpening being added. Ah. All three of my phones have produced very different results, but with the Motorola looking rather blurry and dull, and the Oppo producing a noisy image with a blue tint, it's the OnePlus that wins round one of the camera test. Next up, portrait photography. Ah, hello. I, I wonder if you would help me. I'm testing out three phones and I need somebody to take a picture of them. Yes. Oh, sure. My name's John, by the way. I'm Jürgen. I'm using the phone's portrait modes, which blur the background digitally. The Motorola impresses, giving a professional look, fit for a champion. The background effect was slightly less convincing with the OnePlus, and the colour rendition less pleasing. You actually play football a lot? So I played the odd game with the boys. Ah, good. The Oppo, the most expensive phone here, gave reliable and dynamic results, on par with the slightly cheaper Motorola. I think we can call this round a draw between the two phones. Very nice meeting you, Mr. Klopp. That's the phones tested in daylight, but what are they like in low-light conditions? Jackie, you know anywhere dark? I know just the place. How about the Mersey Tunnel? Great! Each of the phones has its own night mode, ah. which works by digitally combining several images together. While low-light mm. modes work best with static objects, this bus ride will push each camera's Good. abilities to the limit. <laughs> Actually, I'm quite pleased with these rather arty shots of the tunnel. I think the Motorola's probably the best of the bunch. It's got some very pleasing colours. It's aligned the shots well. But uh, whether that's down to the phone's performance or luck, I'm not sure. <laughs> After a morning of snapping the sights, which phone's camera is best? Well, thanks to its low-light and portrait performance, the Motorola just takes the crown. While driver Alan takes a well-earned comfort break, it's time for test number two, 5G speeds. And seeing as we have a strong 5G signal here, it seems like the perfect spot. We're going to use a web browser-based speed measurer. Uh, let's start with the Motorola. As well as Liverpool, 5G has now been rolled out to over 100 towns and cities across the UK. 120 megabits per second. Not bad. That's around double the average home broadband speed in the UK. I wonder if the OnePlus will be any different. 
Ooh. Now we're only getting about 69 megabits. Slightly disappointing. 5G speed is affected by many different factors, from the modem and antennas in the phone to signal strength and the number of phones using the network, which is why I'm testing each one from the same spot, one after the other. Finally, the Oppo. Ooh, this is looking pretty quick too. 120 megabits. Well, I'm not surprised there's a difference. I'm slightly surprised and a bit disappointed that the OnePlus is significantly slower than the other two phones. With Alan's comfort break over, it's wheels away. Over to our right is the Royal Albert Dock Buildings, headquarters of a shipping company called the White Star Line, who, of course, owned the infamous Titanic. But across to the right, you'll see Aintree Racecourse. As night begins to fall, I have time for one last test, gaming. We've seen how the cameras and connection speeds fare, but do these budget smartphones have enough grunt for a graphically intensive game? This time, I'm roping in the help of another local, avid gamer Ben. Ben, nice to meet you. I'd like to play some games on each of the phones um, and tell me what you think about the experience. Start with the Motorola. Let's give it a go. Gaming is a great way to test a phone's capabilities. That loaded quite fast, to be fair to it. The processor, RAM and display all need to perform well when playing a top title like Call of Duty Mobile. Packed with a high dynamic range screen and 6 gigs of RAM, the Motorola sounds good on paper. First impressions? The visuals are quite good, to be fair. Do you feel like you're actually in the battlefield fighting against people? Looks quite similar to console gaming. Let's move on to the OnePlus. The OnePlus's Snapdragon 690 has been rated the lowest of today's processors for its GPU performance. But how does it run in the real world? Graphics look really good, really, really vivid. How does it compare to the Motorola? It's very clear. You know, you can see exactly where all the controls are. So, so OnePlus ahead of the Motorola? Yeah, definitely out of the two. This is the better phone. Interesting. Last up, it's the Oppo, boasting the fastest rated processor of the bunch. <laughs> I'm liking this. Plus, it has the fastest screen refresh rate of the phones at 120 hertz. The OnePlus was good, but this is just the next level. It's slick. The game runs fast, it loads fast. It's visually stunning. Wow! So the 120 hertz screen does really make a difference? Yeah, definitely say this is the better one. I'd happily buy this phone. So, when it comes to raw performance in gaming, you get what you pay for. With the most expensive phone on test, the Oppo, coming out on top. What a splendid day out it's been, hasn't it, Scylla? I'm having a Laura Laura laughs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you went all the way to Liverpool to get a Welsh accent. <laughs> well, I don't know what it was. I was trying not to have one. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, budget 5G phones, are they any good or not? Are yes, they? very good. In fact, surprisingly good. And unless you're really after the ultimate performance, you probably don't need to spend any more money. The three phones each won a category. Did you have a particular favourite? I think if, if I was into gaming, I'd definitely go with the Oppo. But for me, because it's the cheapest and also marginally had probably the best camera, I'd go with the, the Motorola. And it is the budget special. Mm.